how do we make the choices here and now that allow us to abide in Jesus so that we can end up going to the place he has prepared for us. He left us with scripture and the church as our GPS to guide us so that we reach our destination safely. Some of us will take the married route, others religious life, maybe consecrated single life. But if we want to reach him, we need to follow the route he has laid out for us. So that becomes the criteria for making moral choices. Hi, I'm Samantha Stevenson, Catholic convert, homeschooling mother of four, and author of the book Reclaiming Motherhood from a Culture Gone Mad. Welcome to chapter one, the second of 12 episodes in our book study series. These commentaries are designed to aid and augment your understanding of the book, but don't worry if you haven't picked up your copy just yet. This content will stand alone, and I am so glad you're here joining us. If you haven't already, check the description box down below for the link to your free downloadable journal and study guide. It's great for group discussions, but it's also perfect for taking notes to journal as you follow along with this incredible content we have lined up. So let's get to it. Have you ever been on a road trip? Our family takes more road trips than is probably sane for a family with four kids, six and under. But recently we're driving along and my four-year-old son points out the window. He says, oh, that turn looks interesting. Mom, can we go there? No, I answer. Why not? He wanted to know. Well, because that turn wouldn't take us where we're going. That is how I want to suggest to you that we think about the church's moral teachings. So many voices echo the sentiment that the church is outdated. When is she going to catch up with the times? But the thing is that truth is not determined by majority vote. And that can be a really difficult pill to swallow. People object and say things like, who made you the arbiter of truth? And we could walk out Matthew 16 and 1 Timothy 3 verse 15 and say, well, Jesus made the church the pillar and foundation of truth. That's not going to be helpful for everyone. What might be helpful is to shift the metaphor. So when you are on a road trip, presumably you're using some sort of GPS for navigation. Before GPS, we just used plain old paper maps. Either way, you have to chart a course. And what's the first thing that you do? Well, you put in your destination. You have to know where you're going or you're never going to get there. You could follow my four-year-old's method and just take whatever turn looks good to you at the time, but it's highly unlikely that you'll get where you're going. If you do, it'll be highly inefficient, right? You'll probably run out of fuel. But the thing is, you cannot judge whether or not a route is a good one unless you first know where you're going, right? Because that is your point of reference. Is this route a good route? Good for what? Good for getting you to a particular destination. There might be multiple routes to get where you're going. You might choose the straightest path or the fastest, depending on your goals. You might enjoy the scenic route with lots of historical sites along the way, but you can't choose a route at all without a destination in mind. Not all who wander are lost, but they're probably not going somewhere anytime soon. Okay, where am I going with this? You've probably heard this great quotation from the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux, and she says, the world is thy ship and not thy home. In other words, life is a journey. It is a specific kind of journey. It's a pilgrimage. And where are we headed? Heaven, we hope. So, okay, if we want to get to heaven, we can program that in as our destination. And how do we get there? Well, Jesus Christ himself tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through Jesus. So Jesus is the perfect route. Beautiful, right? But we're still left with the question of, well, how do we apply this to everyday life? How do we make the choices here and now that allow us to abide in Jesus so that we can end up going to the place he has prepared for us? Well, he left us with scripture and the church as our GPS to guide us so that we reach our destination safely. Some of us will take the married route, others religious life, maybe consecrated single life. But if we want to reach him, we need to follow the route he has laid out for us. That becomes the criteria for making moral choices. It's not so much about following a law or blind obedience 
as it is understanding that we don't know everything and we need to follow the instructions to get where we're going. We can't just take that random left turn and hope to end up where we want to go. Now, the world tells us that freedom is being left alone to pick any road we choose. Like my son, just whatever road we want is the best one. That looks promising, but that isn't freedom. It isn't freedom, but it is a great way to get lost. And this is just one of the examples of the twisted lie the enemy has strewn all throughout our culture. That limits are incompatible with freedom when, in reality, limits are the ground of our freedom. Real freedom means having the knowledge and the fortitude to choose the right road. The virtue of prudence is being able to take the best route under given conditions. You can find more examples of these lies and the truth that counters them in the chart on pages 26 and 27. There's so many of them. The thing they all have in common is that they lead us inward. They lead us to be self-focused, to make of ourselves our own idols, which is the original sin, right? Thinking that we can be our own gods. And that is worse than simply being lost because what is a word that is entirely selfish, lacking love, lacking generosity, all about filling up the self, cut off from others and from God, that kind of isolation is the definition of hell. The good news of the gospel is that we are not alone. We have the Holy Spirit, the gift of the church and scripture as our GPS that's meant to guide us on the right route. So you ready to get specific? What does this mean for marriage? What are God's divine directives for our femininity, for motherhood, for childbirth, for breastfeeding, for these radical new technologies? We will get to all of that in the upcoming chapters. So stay tuned, subscribe, and sign up for my newsletter at the link below mamapraise.substack.com, and I'll see you next time. God bless.